back. So Paranoid was Black Sabbath's second album. It was released September 8th, 1970 in the UK and later on January 1971 in the US. Matt, where are we at with Black Sabbath in the numbers department? So Best best Ever Albums has it 19 in the decade. Number one in 1970. So we finally, this is our last, because we're kind of doing these chronologic, or oh, yeah. so, uh, not, we're doing chronologically, but we're also ranking them. So this is the number one, this is our first number one album from the decade. Um, number 65 overall. And on Rolling Stones list, it comes in at number 139. Nice. We last discussed Black Sabbath on episode two of this season with covering their debut album. And this really comes out, uh, or they start working on this four months after after they de- their debut album was released. Um, they were back in the studio in June recording. And this was recorded at Regent Sound Studios and Island Studios in London. The new album title was supposed to be titled War Pigs, but Warner Brothers changed it to Paranoid because the record company thought it would be um, a good single because they had already heard Paranoid, the single, and because of fear of backlash from Vietnam War supporters. Um, the lead single, Paranoid, was actually written last and came came out just came about just by Tony playing the guitar rift, and that was enough for them to to basically record it and write it down in you know less than an hour according to to the article um the single reached number four on the uk singles chart and this album reached number one on the uk charts Um, paranoid as a whole was largely written while touring and during sound checks or in between shows they would just um, their songwriting process seemed to be that that tony would come up with a guitar rift and then based on that they would uh, kind of free associate and Ozzy would say something and that would get added to the lyrics that were being written and then the the melodies and everything else would get added as well and that kind of was their process for all of their songs the album was released in January of 1971 in the U.S. because their debut album was still on the charts at the at the time that it was released in the U.K. in in, the, in September of 70 um, they toured the U.S. for the first time with the release of the Paranoid single in October of 1970, and it reached the reached number 12 on the U.S. charts um, by March of 71, despite receiving no radio airplay. Um, the second single on this album was Iron Man. Geezer Butler originally wanted to call the uh, War Pigs Walpurgis, which was the satanic version of Christmas. But as you can guess, they, they sent it off to Warner Brothers and they said, no, too, too satanic. So they changed it to War Pigs. There's a satanic version of Christmas? I guess so, yeah. Um, uh, war Pigs is also about kind of, you know, warmongering and a veiled reference to Vietnam as well. Um, Butler said, quote, that's who the real Satanists are. All these people who are running the banks in the world and trying to get the working class to fight the wars for them, end quote. <laughs> Um, Iron Man was originally titled, titled Iron Bloke after Ozzy heard the guitar part and said, well, it sounds like a, a bloke walking around, Iron <laughs> Bloke walking around. <laughs> and, that would um, not been as good. <laughs> no, I'm glad I they changed it. Iron Bloke. <laughs> uh, I only said that a lot of the sound and the lyrics on this album are about the darker side of life because most of the bands at that time were singing about, quote, flowers in your hair. Um <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne also said something similar, quote, it was me and five kids living in a two bedroom house. My father worked nights. My mother worked days. We had no money. We never had a car. We were rarely on holiday. And suddenly, you know, we hear if you're going to San Francisco, be sure to wear flour in your hair. And we're thinking, what the fuck is San Francisco? Where is this? What's all this flower shit? I've got no shoes on my feet. <laughs> End quote. So, um, the album artwork reflects the original title of War Pigs. Um, so there's a soldier on the cover. It's not really paranoid inducing. Um, w uh, Warner Brothers didn't change it after going with paranoid as the changing the um, title of the album. They didn't change the artwork. 
um, the album title had nothing to do with the sleeve. Osborne said, uh, what the fuck does a bloke dressed as a pig with a sword in his hand got to do with being paranoid? I don't know, but they decided to change the album title without changing the artwork. <laughs> so. I can actually hear him saying that, by yeah. the way. <laughs> so that's about it. Um, because this album came out so shortly after our last discussion and we're going to talk about their, their next album also a little down the line. Um, I did watch a, a documentary that called classic albums that covered this, this, um, album. And that was, I think it was a British TV show on point, but they're all up on Amazon prime. So that's where I saw it. And they're about hour long and they got everybody talking about the album and it's cool hearing, uh, Tony do the guitar parts just by himself and and um, also really cool on this um, this album one would they had the sound mixer guy and he would isolate the different parts of the song and then cha- and then like combine them together so you could hear just like the bass line of the song or just the guitar part and then he would like add Ozzy coming in singing or, or vice versa just having so that that was cool seeing that because I always think try and think about that in my head when I'm listening to a song like what is that part just sound like by itself so that was Mm. that was neat to hear um i do have one fun trivia thing um what band almost named themselves after the track rat salad do you guys know oh any guesses god Uh, somebody in the 70s yep it was the band God. Van Halen. Van Halen. I was going to say, I was going to say, oh. you beat me by a second. I was going to say, I thought it was Van Halen. Yep. Yeah, they like mm-hmm. they like the, the stuff, uh, the drum solo in Rat Salad. So they could have been Rat Salad instead of Van Halen. So <laughs> Correct decision to go the other way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think just Van Halen such a great, <laughs> that's such a great name. So, yeah. Uh, what did you guys, Matt, what did you think of Paranoid and uh, listening to it this time around? Yeah. Um, actually, this is the second time I've listened to it on for this podcast because oh, right. I was screwed up. I <laughs> first covered Black Sabbath. <laughs> and I was like, oh, let's listen to Paranoid. Thanks to my brother again for catching me on that. Um, no, this is great. You know, and it's got three. It's just it's, you, you have three ultimate classic metal songs yeah. on here. You know, War Pigs, Paranoid and, uh, and Iron Man. That riff in Iron Man is just killer. It's just so dark and yeah. heavy and badass and just like i don't know like i i just I, I think it would be just amazing just to see the looks on so many people's faces like the fir- like in 1971 the yeah. first time you hear that you know because that's just got to be so groundbreaking you know um and uh it, it's just great um so yeah, those are songs that I've known for many years and I've always really liked them. And so, but the new, the other stuff on here I liked as well. Um, I thought Hand of Doom had great riffs on that. You know, that was a that was a really cool song. Mm-hmm. You have a little bit of this album, kind of similar because the the first record, it seemed to me there was like at least two, maybe three, I can't remember songs that were long and they had like four or five different parts to it, right? And it was almost it was like a little too much, I think. Um, trying to figure out what's going on it, you know, they're not really settling on anything. They're kind of just going yeah. here and there and there's nothing really that's kind of, it, it all sounds good. It wasn't like it was, it was, you know, I, I didn't like it, but I also felt it was too disjointed. Um, and I think that this is a little bit more cleaned up because you do have some longer songs on here that kind of go in little different directions, have different parts, but it seems much more grounded to me. And I did like that better, but, um, Ozzy sounds great. The guitar is great. There's some cool drumming on here. Cool. I just, I like the musicianship. It's just, it's, it's very, it's a different level, right? It's definitely taking music in a different direction. Mm-hmm. You can just hear on a record like this, how things are just changing. Um, and, uh, and just, yeah, it's great. I can't, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't have a whole lot more to say about it. It's, it's, it's straightforward. There's not a lot of, it does not really changing anything it's the sound is the sound um yeah. and uh it's 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 just great it's it's catchy and that's the other thing too i would say it's it's heavy and, and, and there's a you know there's a lot of um i don't say noise going on but there is a lot of you know it's loud but it's also very musical it's you know and it's it's very melodic uh which is something that i've always liked so uh yeah and ozzy's just got the best voice he's it's it's, it's, it's a great voice for this as well so uh, so big thumbs up for me John, what about you? I know you're familiar with this album. Yeah, this album's awesome and is arguably one of the three best heavy metal albums ever. And there you go. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, I just thought, yeah. no, it's, I mean, it's like, it's, Mic drop. it's so, <laughs> it's so many different things, right? It's, it's signature Black Sabbath sound. It's crazy to think that this is their second album in the same year, by the way, because yeah. the one we covered before and then this one, uh, it's crazy to think they released both of those in the same year, 1970. But yeah, it's quintessential Black Sabbath. It's got some of the quintessential heavy metal songs of all time. Mm. It's the template for any heavy metal bla- band that plays a heavier, sludgier set of riffs. Mm-hmm. It's a template for, as Matt said, metal that can sound melodic and has crossover appeal to it. Um, the voice of Ozzy Osbourne is the template of metal singing for the next, God, 40 years, 50 years, you know, to the modern day to some degree. I mean, uh, you could argue that, you know, that Zeppelin and Sabbath created sort of that lead singer sound for metal, but Sabbath is much more of a metal band. Right. Um, it, it's, yeah, it, the drumming, as, as as Van Halen picked up on, but the drumming is awesome on this album. Um, but it's just, it, it sludges together, but not in a way where you can't pick out uh, the pieces. The, the uh, lyrics are relentlessly dark. Um, <laughs> I mean, they're talking about drugs. They're talking about mental illness. They're talking about death. They're talking about... Uh, you know, all, all kinds War, of stuff. Yeah, war. Yeah, post-apocalyptic. Yeah, it's scenarios. all it's yeah sci-fi type stuff yep. that's in there. It's uh dystopian futures, all kinds of stuff. Uh, and one of the cool things that I've always loved about Sabbath is their equal part. And then here's another thing that they pioneered for what metal would become. They are equal parts a band that can do interesting you know, music only pieces and then do traditional, like what metal sounds like building up to a chorus and build them both on the same albums, which is something that, you know, metal bands to this day are still doing, you know, like when I listen to my metal albums now, that's kind of the thing. It's instrumental tracks or largely instrumental tracks mixed with sort of traditional songwriting. But I mean, this is it. If you want to hear where metal started and pretty much every trope came from, is this, I mean, it's early Sabbath, but this, if you're going to listen to one early Sabbath album, and we're, and we're going to do a couple other ones, you know, in the next couple of years too that have pieces of it, but this is this is the one if you want to get a feel for the evolution of metal. And, and really, this sound of metal would carry, I would argue, all the way into like the 70s, late 70s, like new wave of British heavy metal. Um, you know, and then kind of some other bands took elements of this, the sludged up stuff and glammed it up, you know, and then created another subgenre. But this is where it all began yep. um, for me in metal. Yep. Oh. Yeah. I, I, I would say, I'm sorry, Josh, I, I, I forgot to say, I would say that the, um, the one standout here though, that kind of seems a little off is Planet Caravan. I mean, oh, that yeah, does, I was going to bring that up. Yeah, that mm-hmm. seems to be like cuz this is the this I if you read the description of Apple Music it's like the death of the 60s happened with this <laughs> record, right? <laughs> Yet they have like a very like I don't know, yeah. that to me is almost like a psychedelic 60s oh, kind definitely. of thing, you know, thing that they're doing and it's yeah. it just it's it's kind of filler for me. It doesn't really, there's no riff there at all. It's kind of this like ambient well, that's... type of weird song. So I thought that that was an, I, I don't know if there's a story behind that at all, but it does seem a little out of place here. Yeah, well, it's they, the sound that's the death of the 60s. You know what I mean? Not necessarily yeah. the track itself. Yeah. Right. No, exactly. Right, right. Yeah, I think they wanted to... What I remember them talking about on the doc was that they wanted to kind of expand what their sound was or like show that they could go in a different direction and also wanted to make like a like a drug like a drug space trip type of yeah. song. So <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> yep, and the bongos on there are really good. Um, <laughs> can, yeah, I... <laughs> can... Can I also mention that Paranoid is as much as, if we do an analogy, Paranoid is to metal what Bitch is to blues rock mm, mm. <laughs> in terms of a tightly constructed song around a guitar riff that branches off. So let me just add that. Yeah. the um, I agree with both of you. I love this album. It, this is a defining heavy metal album to me. I have a visceral, visceral reaction listening to this album. I can't help but like want to play air guitar when listening to this album and, and like strum to the guitar and almost... It almost uh, propels me to learn these guitar parts just so I can play them, even though I don't own a guitar, have any musical ability. But I love, I love the album. I love the, just the guitars are guitar so great on here. Um, the it's just this thudding humming like gets in your chest type of sound. Um, the thing that really stood out to me this listen was the rhythm section. They are really good and mm-hmm. they're really tight together. Um, they provide the backbone for this band and. 
uh, Bill Ward's drums are like phenomenal. I love that he gets some drum solos in here and gets some cool like ways to end the uh, end songs or he's got some fills that do um, some really cool things and then they're able to like him and Geezer Butler on bass they're able to like do like change the tempo or like I don't know they they guide the guide the guitar and Ozzy singing in a way well they have that thing that like a lot of metal bands have that they almost have like a jazz feel to them you Mm -hmm. know like that's how I feel like great metal is a lot of times there's actually quite a bit with metal and jazz especially when you go into the longer freeform stuff and that's you know, I, I notice it with Black Sabbath most in the drumming, right? Where the drummers function to some degree, which you'd think they just pound the drums as hard as possible, but that's not what they're doing here. You know, it's right. a different sound. Yeah. I love Ozzy's, uh, the distortion on Ozzy's voice when they do the opening of Iron Man. I think that's just amazing. So and, creepy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and, and lyrically, it is, it is dark, but they are talking about they're kind of like talking about like social issues, right? They're not, they're not advocating for these things. They're talking about soldiers coming back from Vietnam and being addicted to drugs. They're not saying you should do drugs. They're talking about, you know, the, the havoc that nuclear war can, can cause on, on society or, um, but they're not saying we should blow up the world. They, you know, they're not, despite their name, they're not like talking about like Satan and like blood drinking and, you know, more like fantastical elements of things. They're, they're talking about issues and putting them in a dark, more realistic context. So I think that's a, an important distinction or something I noticed this time around. Mm. Um, and I, I like planet caravan. It's kind of a nice, um, like palate cleanser after war pigs and paranoid, they are it just is a change of pace and it's spacey and i like kind of the place it takes you and it it doesn't and then they go right into iron man anyway Mm -hmm. so so it's like strap in because you're about to hear about an iron man from the future comes back and causes uh all of his problems and yeah it's just great i i can't it's yeah just listen to the album i mean (laughs) what else yeah it's really enjoyable too. I think it holds up really well. It doesn't mm. feel of the seventies. And I think it just no. it sounds well, not 71 anyway. At least, yeah. yeah. You yeah. can listen to this today. This is 70, 1970. This yeah, is 70 or 70. UK. Right. You're, yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Right. So yeah, it's just great. I definitely one of the higher rated albums that we've listened to for me. I'll, I'll say this too. And I know I was kind of like the way we covered the first, uh, the first album that's it, uh, their debut album with the opening track black sabbath and i was like damn that that song's terrified me like yeah. in certain ways <laughs> i will say they know how to start an out they get your attention you know yeah. like right away because that <laughs> you know this this begins with the war pigs you got like the war siren you got the kind yep. of thing going on it's just a dun, dun, and then just waits it goes back into it and it's then just, you can it, hear the the is it the, the hi-hat symbols, or the hi-hat yeah, yeah right like in the background yeah yeah just keep well, it the time there but it's very they're they're very good at they grab your attention from the mm-hmm. get-go you know um and that's yeah in, in the way that they do it is very it's it's very powerful and it's yeah it's it's certainly ahead of its time um mm-hmm. well and sure war pigs is a top 10 metal song for me ever it's fantastic it's such like you said Matt. it's such a great way to start the album i remember listening to this album when i was like 11 years old i think and i had the same reaction josh did it was like a visceral like like of the album um one of the earliest like real visceral reactions to an album when i was just kind of getting into metal because you know for me at that time metal was the stuff that was on mtv you know the light metal and this was like whoa there's another element of metal that sounds it was kind of like how i felt when i first discovered punk you know just this has a little bit more edge to it um, and I, I've always told the story about I can't hear the song Paranoid without thinking about the guy who played the, the guitar naked in the elevator during uh, Parents Weekend and oh, Mr. Dave for me. <laughs> so that riff is just, it will forever be synonymous with a naked acoustic guitar player playing the riff from Paranoid on on uh, Parents Week. <laughs> that's that's unfortunate. MSU. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's also so. one of those things, too, because I also, I like, 
you could just hear somebody trying to play this on an acoustic guitar, like some college well, he, dude. And well, it's he was like, stoned. It's, it's what you do is the hardest part is the last part of it, Matt, because you have to do that transition. So it's like, yeah. you know, the first couple parts are really easy because Randy Rhodes, you know, the guitarist for Ozzy later, like notoriously hated playing the songs on this because he thought they were like very basic riffs with just small stuff. But they're awesome riffs. So I kind of get what he's saying. But but yeah, that's like. It's kind of like, you know, and then you get that dun, 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 and that's the part where people fuck it up all the time. Well, right. you got you got you yeah. got to pause, right? Cuz you yes, got to uh-huh. you got to move the fingers, right? And you got to make sure then you, Well, you know. there's an art to sliding it in a way that doesn't sound too quick or too slow where you're you Yeah, know, but naked naked yeah. stoned elevator guys not going to be able to handle that. <laughs> well, so. he was like getting it right some of the time and fucking it up yeah. the other times, which is what I also think of the riff cuz you know, there would be sometimes where he'd like get it like perfectly like dun, 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 and then other times where it'd be like you know like up and you'd hit the wrong thing so like half the time it was really good and half the times it was you know rough and that's the the you know the beauty of that riff you know yeah no but i did i did like listening to the other songs i didn't know as well um i would say you know it's almost like i feel like paranoid is almost an overplayed song like it's not Mm -hmm. like i don't like it but it's it, it, to me, right at this point, it's kind of when I hear it, I like it, but it, it's I'm not hearing it viscerally anymore. Like it's right. kind of like you know, because it's it is a little bit overplayed. It's still great, but um, but that's why with stuff like Electric Funeral, Hand of Doom, the last track, which you know, what is it? What what is it? Uh, Jack the Stripper. Uh, fairies is what wear it, boots. Is fairies what wear it bo- was originally called, and then they tacked on the Jack the Stripper uh, in the North okay. American version. Got it. Okay. Well, that's that's got some cool parts to it. A lot of cool yeah. riffs in here. And yeah, that's interesting, John. It doesn't have to be complicated to be good. You know, you can just do like the simplest thing and just do it well, like with the right guitar sound, the right, you know, the distortion or whatever. Yep. Um, put a great rhythm behind it and it's damn classic song, you know. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, they had a real mm-hmm. formula for, they seemed, they had, you know, played a lot already in like, you know bars and and places and even though this is their second album they're really tight as a as a quartet so you can you can hear that yeah no for sure so yeah i think it's it is their highest rated album um and we do cover i think we do one more in the regular we do master of reality from Mm -hmm. 1971 so we'll be Mm -hmm. doing that that's coming up yeah i think that's our follow-up their third album Mm -hmm. and i believe we do uh in a bonus episode we do blizzard of oz so, oh good. Mm-hmm. So we will get an Ozzy uh, solo album at least. Oh yeah, I don't think we're gonna get do any we, uh... Ozzy solo in the regular. Let me check real quick. John, do you have any idea? Is it Blizzard of Oz? You think that's his highest rated album on best ever albums? It's his highest it rated solo album. Blizzard yeah. of Oz, I'm sure yeah. it is. Yeah, it's uh-huh. 158 in the 1980s on best ever albums. So that's yeah. the. I think it's in the uh, top the uh, Rolling Stone list though. Okay, that's why I think we get it for Cold List and Hot Take. Nice. So, Man, he looks freaky on the Bark at the Moon album cover. He's a freaky guy. Ozzy's a freaky guy. Bark at the yes. Moon. <laughs> I was thinking of that video. It's like the cheesy, like, you know, 80s, early 80s horror effects. Yeah, with the, that, like, uh, what, I don't even know what it is. That, like, lens, Josh, that looks like it's sort of like, like a, like a bubble, like glazed over bubble. Oh, like a fish bubble. islands? Yeah, fish yeah. islands. There you go. Mm-hmm. So, I yep. Guess, I think I vaguely remember that music video. <laughs> it's worth maybe we could post it on the uh at combing the yeah. twitter i'll go find it actually and post it after we're done tonight so gotcha